Adam here at the Digital Gojo Sherm. Today we're gonna to answer your most frequently asked questions on the A7 III. Stay tuned. So if you just purchased your A7 III or thinking about buying one, this video is for you. We gathered the most frequently asked questions regarding this camera. We're also gonna show you how to set up some of the most popular features, so make sure to stay to the end. So if you're like me and have a variety of lenses in your camera bag already, and you wanna know, can you use those lenses with the Sony a7 III? Let's find out. Sony offers a wide selection of lenses for the E-mount system, especially the full frame like the a7 III, but like me, you might have a wide selection of lenses from other manufacturers in your camera bag. And you have adapters like the Sigma MC11 that offer you the ability to connect Sigma EF mount global vision series lenses to your Sony mirrorless camera, like the 100 to 400 millimeter lens that I have here. And you'll look over here, you have three different manufactured lenses. You have lenses from Tamron. This is the 28 to 75 f 2.8 that will fit directly onto your Sony mirrorless camera and work beautifully. You have your Zeiss Battist line of lenses and you have the Sigma lenses that fit directly to your Sony mirrorless camera with no adapter. The a7 III is a fully capable 4K recording machine. Now, what's the best SD card or what's the recommended SD card to use to record all that data? If you're gonna be recording in 4K, that's a lot of data that has to be transferred from the camera to the card, and you're gonna to wanna to use the fastest card possible. Now, the a7 III records to two memory cards. The first card slot is UHS-2, and Sony offers a G-Type as well as an M-Type UHS-2 memory card. The G-Type is gonna be the fastest card with read-write speeds of 299 megabytes. Uh, card slot two is gonna accept UHS-1 cards. I definitely recommend looking into the cards that are as fast as Class 10 U3 V30 with a write speed of 95 megabytes per second. Uh, this is gonna allow you to shoot uh, RAW and JPEG photos at the same time. Uh, or you can set up the camera to be a redundant recording media. So you can record stills on one card and it will copy that same image onto the next card as backup. So you might be in a situation where you cannot make any noise while taking photographs. Does the Sony a7 III have silent shooting? So you might be in a situation where this is annoying and you know you might be asked to turn off the shutter. Now the a7 III does have silent shooting and what you'd have to do is you're gonna have to go into your menu and you're gonna have to go to the second tab of the menu, the custom setting menu and go to page four. Uh, that's where it's gonna allow you to change your uh, shutter to a silent sound. And once you do that, you can now take pictures and nobody will know that you're releasing the shutter. This question is for all the people that are on the fence between buying the a7R 3 which is the 45 megapixel sensor, and the a7 III, which has a 24 megapixel, but you also like shooting under low light. Which camera performs better in the high ISO? If low light photography is your thing, but you're also kind of liking the 42 megapixel sensor from the a7R 3 um, and you're really interested in taking low light photography and want the cleanest image possible. Now the, the a7 III has the same size sensor, but 24 megapixels. Uh, now this allows the photo sites to be larger on the a7 III. In fact, the camera is able to go up to an, a base ISO of 51,200, where the a7R III can only go up to 25,600. So again, if shooting low light is your thing, I'd really focus on the Sony a7 III. So it's really important to connect an external HDMI monitor to your camera when recording video and people want to know could you use both the external HDMI monitor as well as the screen on the back of the camera to record video. I always recommend using an external monitor when recording video especially with the a7 III. Um, now when you first get your camera what you're gonna have to do to set it up is go into your camera setup menu into tab three of seven, go to your HDMI info display, uh, turn that off, and basically what that's gonna do is allow you to get a clean signal to your external monitor and have the ability to see the info displayed on the camera itself, on the rear LCD. Uh, now, if you wanna shoot in 4K video, you're gonna need a monitor that's able to accept the signal 
that's in 4K, otherwise the monitor is going to not display the information that's needed. Um, also, a difference between the A7 III and some of the older cameras from Sony that shot 4K is uh, when you connect an external monitor that's capable of accepting a 4K signal, is the LCD on the back of the camera is not going to dim when using an external monitor. You can have incredible 4K footage, but if your audio sounds like this, people are gonna always switch to the next video. So how can you improve, or what are some tips to improve your audio on the a7 III? So to improve the audio when using your a7 III, I always recommend purchasing an external microphone. The camera does have built-in mics, but I do not recommend utilizing the built-in mics for serious work. Now, Sony offers a microphone input with a three and a half millimeter uh, input jack, as well as a headphone jack to monitor the sound. Uh, but they also have a multi-interface shoe on the top of the camera. This allows you to purchase the XLR A2M uh, unit that gives you the ability to connect two microphones and it provides phantom power and you get a multiple or a variety of controls for the sound quality. Uh, now you can also purchase a microphone that will go on top of the hot shoe that would plug directly into the three and a half millimeter port if you want. Um, and also remember uh, the best audio quality if you're gonna record dialogue is where the microphone is close to the person. Now whether or not you wanna use a wireless microphone like what we're using right now, um, or you wanna use a boom mic, um, you'd be able to do that when using uh, an, a unit like the XLR A2M or if you have a separate audio recording device. A lot of clients are requesting slow motion for today's videos. Uh, what's the highest frame rate and at what quality does the Sony a7 III record at? So the a7 III is fully capable of recording at 120 frames per second at 1080p. That means you're gonna get incredible slow motion. So if you're looking to capture that surfer catching the wave in slow motion, this camera is gonna do a phenomenal job. Now there's a couple different modes that you can choose for slow motion. You can choose a mode where the camera conforms the video to 30 frames or 24 frames per second from the 120 frames per second in camera. So you can export that slow motion right away or you can choose the 120 frames per second and you do it in the computer. I would recommend choosing the, the latter. Uh, this is gonna give you your best quality. Um, if you're looking to do 4K and slow motion, at 4K the a7 III is capable of shooting at up to 30 frames per second. What functions does the touchscreen have on the Sony a7 III? Let's find out. So the a7 III does not have a complete touchscreen, so you can't access the menu or swipe through the images in the playback, but what you do have is the ability to do touch and drag AF in the photo mode, of course. Uh, so if you have the viewfinder up to your eye, you can use the LCD as a complete pad to move the focusing point to where you need it to go. You can also choose how much of the area of the LCD you want to use. Now for video, uh, you can set it up as uh, touch to focus. So when you tap the screen, um, it will actually focus in the area that you want it to. Um, and you have a lot of control as far as focusing speed. So you can do a nice pull focus uh, just by tapping the area that you want in focus and when you want to change the area itself. So if you're a portrait photographer, this question is for you. How do you set up the eye autofocus on the Sony a7 III? Eye autofocus is extremely helpful when shooting portraits and the a7 III does a phenomenal job. Uh, by default, when you turn on your camera, the middle button in the control wheel is going to activate the eye autofocus. Now, the camera has a ton of customizable buttons that you can program for eye autofocus. So if you feel more comfortable using either C1 or C2, or if you have a lens that has a custom setting button on it, you can program that button to activate the eye autofocus. Now, the best settings that I feel work well with eye autofocus is when you have your camera set to continuous AF as well as wide tracking AF. So that wraps it up folks with our frequently asked question video. If I didn't get to any of your questions, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. If this video helped you out, remember hit us up with a like button underneath, subscribe to our channel. And if you're in the Miami area, come by, say hello at the Digital Gojo showroom. Adam here, keep on shooting. I'll catch you in the next video folks.